and welcome to a priori story timeless. I'm sitting here with Saki and a turtle and hedgehog and a wonderful book. And this is uh, Robin Wall Kimmerer's book called Braiding Sweetgrass. <coughs> and we'll be reading the uh, opening story. It's called Sky Woman Falling. Okay. You okay, Mr. Saki? You good like there? Yeah. Okay. So this story it starts with a little preface. In winter, when the green earth lies resting beneath a blanket of snow, this is the time for storytelling. The storytellers begin by calling upon those who came before, who passed the stories down to us for we are only messengers. In the beginning, there was the sky world. She fell like a maple seed, pirouetting on an autumn breeze. A column of light streamed from a hole in the sky world, marking her path where our only darkness had been before. It took her a long time to fall in fear or maybe hope, she clutched a bundle tightly in her hand. Hurtling downward, she saw only dark water below. But in that emptiness, there were many eyes gazing up at the sudden shaft of light. They saw there a small object, a mere dust mote in the beam. As it grew closer, they could see that it was a woman, arms outstretched, long black hair billowing behind as she spiraled toward them. The geese nodded at one another and rose together from the water in a wave of goose music. She felt the beat of their wings as they flew beneath to break her fall. Far from the only home she'd ever known, she caught her breath at the warm embrace of soft feathers as they gently carried her downward. And so it began. The geese could not hold the woman above the water for much longer. So they called a council to decide what to do. Resting on their wings, she saw them all gather, loons, otters, swans, beavers, fish of all kinds, a great turtle floated in their midst and offered his back for her to rest upon. <coughs> Gratefully, she stepped from the goose wings onto the dome of his shell. The others understood that she needed land for her home and discussed how they might serve her need. The deep divers among them had heard of mud at the bottom of the water and agreed to go find some. <coughs> Loon dove first, but the distance was too far, and after a long while, he surfaced with nothing to show for his efforts. One by one, the other animals offered to help, otter, beaver, sturgeon. But the depth, the darkness, and the pressures were too great for even the strongest of swimmers. They returned gasping for air with their heads ringing. Some did not return at all. Soon, only little muskrat was left, the weakest diver of all. He volunteered to go while the others looked on doubtfully. His small legs flailed as he worked his way downward and he was gone a very long time. They waited and waited for him to return, fearing the worst for their relative. And before long, <coughs> a stream of bubbles rose with the small, limp body of the muskrat. He had given his life to aid this helpless human. But then the others noticed that his paw was tightly clenched. And when they opened it, there was a small handful of mud. Turtle said, here, put it on my back and I will hold it. Sky Woman bent and spread the mud with her hands across the shell of the turtle. Moved by the extraordinary gifts of the animals, 
she sang in thanksgiving <coughs> and then began to dance, her feet caressing the earth. The land grew and grew as she danced her thanks from the dab of mud on turtle's back until the whole earth was made. Not by Sky Woman alone, but from the alchemy of all the animal's gifts coupled with her deep gratitude. Together, they formed what we know today as Turtle Island, our home. Like any good guest, Sky Woman had not come empty handed. The bundle was still clutched in her hand. When she toppled from the hole in the sky world, she had reached out to grab onto the tree of life that grew there. In her grasp were branches, fruits and seeds of all kinds of plants. These she scattered onto the new ground and carefully tended each one until the world turned from brown to green. Sunlight streamed through the hole from the sky world, allowing the seeds to flourish. Wild grasses, flowers, trees, and medicine spread everywhere. And now that the animals, too, had plenty to eat, many came to live with her on Turtle Island. You see a little muskrat there, Ducky. Yeah. Thank you all. <laughs>